mai ka pi'ina a kala i kumu kahi, a ka velona a kala i ka mole olu o lehua. Mai ka piko a kea pa'a i luna a ka mole uaua o i pa'a i lalo. Aloha e nga akua, aloha e nga aumaku, aloha e nga li'i o ka aini. Aloha e nga kupuna, aloha e nga makua, aloha e nga o pio. Aloha mai kakou e nga hoa o iwi, e nga hoa aloha aina, a me nga hoa velo like a puni ka honua. O wauna ho eke ia o no e au karauto, o waiakea i Hawaii ku oa ne hānau, o kohola alele i hāma kua ku ukula iwi, ku aina ho e noho nei. O ka mauna a wākea ku umauna, o kohola alele ku ukai, a o wai halulu ho e ku uwai ola. Aloha to you all, fellow indigenous peoples, fellow aloha aina, fellow allies. Aloha to your homelands your home waters, aloha to your elders, your leaders, your children, and aloha to each and every one of you. My name is Noel Peralto. Waiakea, Hawaii is the land that birthed me. Hoholā lele, Hamakua is the land that raised me. Mauna Awakea is my mountain. Hoholā lele is my ocean. And Waihalulu is my water. I am a founding member and serve as the current executive director of Hui Malama Ikiala Ulili, or Hui Mao, a Native Hawaiian nonprofit organization and ohana rooted in the rural community of Pa'awilo, Amakua, on the northeast coast of Hawaii Island. Mahalo nui and many thanks to the organizers of the World Indigenous Forum for inviting me to share my story with you all in this venue. I am truly humbled and honored. The title of my presentation reflects the subject of the story I will be sharing with you all. Aloha Aina, Indigenous Relationships for Birthing Abundant Futures. Aloha Aina can be described simply as a love for land, but it is much more complex than that. So instead of trying to define this term further for you right now, I'm instead going to share with you Mo'olelo Aloha Aina, stories that demonstrate what Aloha Aina means to me and how Aloha Aina, as in Oivi Hawaii, a native Hawaiian value, praxis, and indigenous set of relationships, has and will continue to birth abundant futures for our people and this planet we call home. The Mo'olelo I'm going to share with you first is about the land that holds the bones of my ancestors and that sustains me and my relations to this day. The name of this place is Hamakua. And like any name, this place name tells an important story about the genealogical relationships of our people and the inherent responsibilities that these relationships imbue upon us. Amakua can literally be translated as the breath of a parent or the parent stock, as the stock of a parent plant. In particular, for my community and I, this name reminds us of the relationships that we have to this particular plant, kalo or taro. Kalo for our people is an ancestor and an elder sibling of ours as people. The Mo'olelo of Halua teaches us this. His story begins with Papahana Moku, the mother who gives birth to our islands, and Wakea, the father who is the great expanse in the sky. Papahana Moku and Wakea give birth to a daughter. Ohoku Kalani, who is embodied in the stars of the sky. Ohoku Kalani and Wakea then give birth to a son, a stillborn son, by the name of Halua Nakalau Kapalili, who they bury at the corner of their house. From the place where they bury their child then grows forth the first Kalo plant. Ohoku Kalani then gives birth to a second son and names him Halua after the first. Aloha becomes a famed chief and the first human ancestor of ours as Kanaka Hawaii. This Mo'olelo teaches us about the birth of Aloha Aina, a relationship between our people and this place that is familiar, embodied in the Kalo plant, the elder sibling that feeds us. Returning now to my homelands, Hamakua, through this Mo'olelo of Haloa, we liken our island to the Kalo plant. They are, after all, siblings birth, both born of Wakea and Papahana Moku. 
If we consider the anatomy of the kalo plant, we see that the ha or the stalk is connected to the lau or leaf at the pico. We as people also have pico, our umbilical cord, our fontanel on the top of our head, and our reproductive organs. Similarly, our island too has a pico. The summit of our highest and most sacred mountain, Mauna Kea, the mountain child of Wakea, is our pico. Like the kalo plant, what connects the pico of the island to its taproot or mole is the ha, the ha makua. The same parent stock that connects us as Oivi to our ancestral parents, Papahano Moku and Wakea. And as the parent stock of the island of Hawaii, Amakua has an important responsibility to the rest of the island, encompassing the two parent mountains of our island, Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. This aina of Hamakua carries the sacred function of feeding and nourishing the rest of the island with water, fresh water, that is captured by these two parent mountains and held in our island's largest aquifer, Ka'ohe. And as any parent has the responsibility to care for their ohana, their family, we too as its children have the responsibility of caring for our mahua, to malama aina, to protect, care for, and cultivate our homelands. This mo'olelo of hamakua is a hamakua-centric one. It places hamakua at the center of our universe. This is aloha aina. Aloha Aina centers our homelands as the pico, as our place of connection, our source of strength, our point of reference, and our guiding star as we navigate the rough seas of our lived reality as Kanaka Oivi, indigenous peoples of Ko Hawaii Pai Aina. This centering of homelands, this pride of place, this Aloha Aina, however, is not at the expense of any other place. It's not prideful arrogance. It's not a superiority complex. It is the foundational understanding of what it feels like to be in an intimate relationship with a place and an embodied knowing of the responsibilities that such a relationship entails. That we treat our place like the most important place in the world, care for it in that manner and act accordingly when we enter into other spaces knowing that that place, that homeland, is the most important place in the world to the people that it feeds and nourishes. Aloha Aina, as Oivi Hawaii poet Ku'ulani Muse put it beautifully, quote, is not a latent affection. It cannot thrive in the abstract. It is a living love. It entreats us to act, to awaken, to protect, to restore to turn our hands to the earth, to raise our voices in the boardroom, and to place our bodies in the line of fire. Aloha Aina is not an ideology of the few, a practice better left for the earth priest hands of farmers that are shouldered by environmentalists that are championed by Oivi. It is a love of the mother, a connection both cellular and innate, a human directive that lives deeply in us all it speaks to our origins, and it points the only way forward." End quote. As a relationship or set of relationships, Aloha Aina too has a genealogy. And for the sake of the time in this presentation, I'm afraid I'll have to simplify and summarize. So though Aloha Aina was born along with our first ancestors, Haaloa, and these islands, I'm going to start this genealogy with our ancestors of the late 19th century who articulated Aloha Aina as a political stance, a platform to stand upon and fight for the sovereignty of our homelands and the independence of our nation. These ancestors of ours mobilized Aloha Aina as a battle cry, a unifying call to action rooted in love for our country, specifically in response to the illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom by white supremacists with the support of the United States military in 1893. In the years that followed, these ancestors of ours, both men and women, organized this resistance to gather 
over 40,000 signatures in opposition to the annexation of Hawaii by America, effectively defeating a proposed treaty of annexation in the United States Congress. They vowed, as James Kaulia stated in 1897, to stand firm in Aloha Aina to protest the annexation. Ahiki ke Aloha Aina hopeloa until the very last Aloha Aina shall live. As history would have it, the United States Congress would eventually pass a joint resolution to seemingly legitimize their occupation of the Hawaiian Kingdom, which continues to this day. The onset of U.S. occupation in our homelands consequently created the conditions for processes of colonization and erasure that attempted to completely erase our native ecological and cultural landscapes from existence and to replace them with that of the settler society. On the ground here in Hamakua, as acres of Aina cultivated and cared for by our Oivi ancestors for generations were clear cut and plowed, planted over in sugarcane. And it was as if a rubber eraser had been taken to a significant number of pages in the book of Hawaii Islands history. Erasure, however, does not occur instantly and it is never complete. It occurs over generations, both physically on the Aina and through stories in the minds of a people, as families, communities, and their systems of abundance are dismembered, and as people and their stories are displaced from Aina, land, to whom they belong. This is not, however, the story I have brought to share with you. The story I would rather choose to share with you is another one of Aloha Aina that has begun to free our histories for future flowerings and inspire the regrowth and regeneration of all that those cane plows and plantation owners hoped would disappear beneath the surface of the soil that reluctantly provided for their business ventures for over a century. It was in the 1970s that Aloha Aina emerged again as our people resisted the continued destruction of our homelands and erasure of our culture. Spurred on by the actions of community organizations like the Protect Kaho'olawe Ohana, a constellation of nonviolent struggles emerged throughout Hawaii, led by young Oivi Hawaii, who, like George Helm, challenged the United States presence in Hawaii and its, quote, refusal to give credibility to the Hawaiian culture based on Aloha Aina. End quote. These Aloha Aina of my parents' generation catalyzed a resurgence of Aloha Aina in practice, deriving strength and guidance from elders and families throughout Hawaii who remain steadfast in their Aloha for their Aina. This brings me back home to the elders and family who inspired the birth of a new generation of Aloha Aina here in Hamakua through the establishment of Hui Malama Ikeala Ulili or HUIMA, the nonprofit organization for which I have the honor of serving as the executive director. Over the past decade, our HUIMA Ohana has taught me a great deal about Aloha Aina. Against the forces of erasure and dispossession that forced many other Oivi off their land in Hamakua throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries, our Ohana, our family, moved to stay only Pa'a Ike Aloha Aina, steadfast in their place over generations. And it's from this regenerative family space that Hui Mao was birthed and its collective work to bring about abundant futures in Hamakua and Hawaii has emerged and grown since 2011. Their stories of Aloha for Ohana and Aina in the face of various forces that serve to dismember families and disconnect us from ancestral systems of abundance served as the inspiration for our Hui's vision for a Hamakua that inspires and empowers Ohana with the capacity to live and thrive in Hamakua for generations, with deep aloha and kuleana for the Aina and Ohana to whom we belong, and with great expertise in regenerating and maintaining the systems that feed us physically, intellectually, and spiritually. And their stories of movement and resilience over generations inspired the articulation of our mission to reestablish the systems that sustain our community, 
to place-based educational initiatives and land-centered practices that cultivate abundance, regenerate responsibilities, and promote collective health and well-being. Understanding that we cannot thrive in place without healthy family, food, spiritual, ecological, educational, and economic systems. And as a result, over the past seven years, our staff of eight, our board of nine, thousands of community volunteers, and I have worked to fulfill this mission by establishing a Hawaiian culture and Aina-based youth after school and summer mentorship program, which has serviced over 300 children, ages five to 17, and their families in our rural community with a population of only about a thousand. By leading the creation of community murals and curriculum at three public schools in Hamakua and the neighboring region of Hilo Paliku. Restoring native plant species and Hawaiian agricultural systems in over 10 acres of former sugarcane and eucalyptus plantation lands in the Ahupua'a of Koholalele and Pa'awilo. By hosting over 100 community work days and 20 ohana training workshops in various Hawaiian life staining practice, practices, including basic Hawaiian language, Hawaiian moon calendar practices, environmental observations, food preservation, art, makahiki games and ceremonies, and place-based mo'olelo. By revitalizing the celebration of Hawaii's first national holiday, La Ho'i Ho'i Ea, Sovereignty Restoration Day as an annual community event and gathering in our community of Pa'awilo. By developing a long-term master plan for the expansion of our efforts to regenerate Aina and community across 390 acres in the lowland regions of the Ahupua'a of Koholalele and Kainehe. And during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, distributing over 50,000 pounds of fresh, locally grown produce and proteins to hundreds of elders and families in need in our community through our Community Kitchen Food Distribution Program, which we began in March 2020. And it all begins with Aloha Aina, an ethical framework and a set of practices rooted in our place-based relationships to Aina that shapes our relationality and identities as indigenous people of Hawaii, generates our responsibilities to our homelands, families, and communities, and nation, guides our decision-making with regard to politics and governments, and empowers us to understand our place within a continuum of Aloha Aina, past, present, and future so as to live and love in ways that ensure the continued well-being of our lands, waters, and relations, human and non-human, for countless generations to come. In thinking about those countless generations to come, allow me now to share with you a vision, a mo'olelo of abundance from a future here in Hamakua, which takes us a century into the future from now, in the post-COVID-19 era to the time of our descendants. Looking back upon us and the work that we do from this time forward to create and birth a future of abundance rooted in Aloha Aina for our place and for our people. This Mo'olelo of Abundance has recently been published in the value of Hawaii 3 Hulihia, which you can find open source online. A century has passed since the great Kulihia, the great turning of the 2020s when the former state of Hawaii took its final breaths during the global COVID-19 pandemic crisis. The pandemic was indeed, quote, a portal, a gateway between one world and the next, end quote, as Indian author activist Arundhati Roy suggested in her 2020 essay, providing an opportunity for our kupuna to imagine another world one vastly different from the one they inhabited. In the midst of a global pandemic, they imagined, or perhaps it was a combination of their courageous imaginings and enactings 
a world that stitched the rupture between their future and a more distant past. Today, we know this vision as a mo'olelo of abundance. In fact, our kupuna created the conditions for us to live this mo'olelo of abundance that we all know and love. Perhaps this world of ours looks a lot more like the Hawaii centuries prior to COVID-19. Perhaps our 21st century kupuna ancestors never thought it possible before the pandemic. Perhaps we have not yet reached the nu, the peak that they strive for. After all, the future is created every day through our actions and inactions. For generations now in Hamakua, we have lived on the precipice of complete autonomy from the rest of our island and world. Not disconnected, but simply lava, satisfied and fulfilled with the abundance we have cultivated on our aina and in our community. It has not come without struggle. Every meal we can now provide for our families has come at the cost of immense sacrifice. When I think about the time of the great Hulihia, the great transformation that set us on this path, I think of our courageous ancestors who changed the course of our history. I think of the ones who emerged out of the time of sugar plantations, who saw past towering stands of eucalyptus plantations, and who acted with bold convictions to return our hands to the land and to transform land into Aina again. For us in Hamakua Hikina, it started in Kohola Alele with Hui Mala Maikiala Ulili. Driven by a mission to reestablish the systems that sustain our community, Hui Mao turned 300 acres of eucalyptus covered land into food bearing Aina within 10 years of the onset of COVID-19. As it had been 18 generations prior to the great Hulihia, in the time of our great Ali'i Mahi'ai, our great farmer chief Umi Ali Loa, Koholalele again became a pico, a center of resurgence for regenerating Aloha Aina in our district. After Huimao established the Kulaivi Koholalele Halau for Oivi excellence, it was not long before a new generation of Aloha Aina was born, establishing Kipuka Aloha Aina in Ahupua'a in sub-districts throughout Hamakua from Kaula to Honoke'a. Koholalele became a model for 21st century Ahupua'a based governance where Mahi'ai Limalau, collective cultivation, became a common practice again in Hamakua. When the pandemic forced governments to prioritize genuine homeland security over militarization, hunger and famine became our collective adversary, as it had in generations past. Mehimeala e ho'uka na imu o ke kahi kahua kaua. Meke alu alu aku i ka enemi kipi i ka aina. O ya ho'e ka vi, o na kau i hala e. Me ka ho'opuehu aku i aya a lilo i me ole. Me heo palala i mua o ka makani. Just as if the hunger and the famine had become like dust in the wind. Disappeared by the collective work of our people. Within two generations, monocropped fields of sugarcane and eucalyptus overgrown with guinea grass became one of Hawaii's most famous groves of ulu, breadfruit, affectionately known as Kamaha Ulu or Kohola Lele. It is beloved today not because it is where everyone in our community goes to work, but because it's where everyone goes to ai, to eat of the aina. Organizing with local farmers to replace outdated zoning regulations with new Aloha Aina-centered policies, Uimau created Kamaha Ulu o Koholalele as a residential breadfruit agroforestry system. This regenerative space provides Ohana families with Kuleana Aina, a place where they can noho papa, where they can live, subsist and thrive, be born and be buried, and to which they are ultimately accountable for generations. It is reminiscent of the community created by Umi and Kaleo Ku in Waipunale during their time of great revolution. Kahi hanai kanaka o Umi. O kahanai no ia i kanaka a piha ua halau, piha ua halau. They fed people until houses were filled and filled with people Ayana kanaka apau, 
Kamahi ai kahananu. And for all of the people there, farm cultivation of the land was their main task. E malama ike kanakanui, ike kanakaiki, ike ele makue, ike lele luahine, ike keiki, ike ilihune, ike meamai. Ho okahi hananui, o kahanai ike kanaka. They cared for the big people, they cared for the little people, they cared for the old men and women, they cared for the children, they cared for those in living in destitution, they cared for the sick. And it was that great task of feeding, nurturing, nurturing, and caring for people that this community engaged in. And as the mahaulu, as the breadfruit grew, so too did the farming. And as the farmers cultivated food, so too did our capacity to love ourselves and each other intimately and to ai, to govern ourselves, grow as well. Our local economy is now a circular one, founded upon Aloha Aina and centered around community care and sharing. In the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement, funding for policing and prisons in Hawaii was gradually reinvested in Ho'oponopono, conflict resolution, healthcare, and education. The Department of Education was decentralized in favor of community-based schooling, halal, designed to create educational pathways for specialization in life-sustaining and innovative technologies and practices, with a particular focus here in Hamakua on the four Ms, mo'olelo, storytelling and creative arts, mahi'ai, food cultivation and weather forecasting, malama aina, aina regeneration, and malama kayaulu, community care. In 2020, most adults worked in the tourism and construction industries. Now, over 90% of us work here in our community halau, which provides educational programs and physical and mental health care services for all ages free of cost. In Kamahaulu, which provides 100% of our food resources from the land to our stomachs, aina to opu, via the Hamakua Food Hub Network. In the Hui Malama Aina, which stewards our district's watersheds, forests, streams, springs, and fisheries, and oversees development projects, waste management, and all pathways of travel. And in a variety of family and community owned enterprises that provide other essential services related to energy, repair, recycling, and self care. Our ancestors in Hamakua weren't the only ones creating this Hulihia revolution. Post-COVID-19, kipuka aloha aina, pockets, oases of aloha aina emerged and erupted in every corner and crevice of these islands. From the depths of our deepest despair emerged ea, a new Hawaii breathing free of the chains of imperialism. Following the collapse of the United States of America ushered by the Trump administration, Hawaii quickly resumed its position as an independent country and a leader among a constellation of deoccupied and demilitarized island nations in Oceania. This political autonomy was not given. It was the result of an intergenerational struggle to reestablish ea, sovereignty, independence. The organizing and collective action of Po'e Aloha Aina reignited our critical Hawaiian national consciousness around social justice, food sovereignty, and community-based governance. In Hamakua, this means that decision-making about our lands, our seas, our waters, and our community are now made at the scale of our sub-districts, Kalana, by a council of knowledgeable, responsibility-driven representatives from each of three Hamakua districts. Within these Aha Ai Kalana, Responsibilities for decision-making is weighed in relation to each person's physical and intellectual proximity to the people, places, and practices at the core of the decision. Matters of district scale importance are vetted by an aha aimoku, a council for the district, and matters of the island scale are decided by the aha aimokupuni, island council. Matters of pai aina scale 
archipelago scale of importance are vetted by the Ahakua Papa, a decentralized assembly of representatives from each moku and each mokupuni, each district and each island. This structure of governance has empowered communities in Hawaii to ea, to rise, to emerge in sovereignty, to excel in fulfilling their responsibilities, and to come together as a unified aupuni when necessary. For example, the Ahakua Papa supported the perpetual designation of Mauna Kea and the Ka'ohe Aquifer as national, national Vahi Kapu, free of industrial development and militarization, protected to fulfill their life-giving functions for natural and cultural regeneration. The COVID-19 pandemic did not create the great Hulihia. It was merely the portal the piku into which our kupuna, our ancestors, courageously entered and emerged anew. Here in Hamakua of 2120, we recall this as our mo'olelo of abundance. And so the questions I pose to you, what world did the ancestors of your aina imagine? What world did they fight for? And what world did they birth into existence for you? Aloha Aina is a relationship that has given birth to the great abundance of our past, and it is the relationship that will give birth again to the great abundance of our future. And while Aloha Aina is the term we use to describe this relationship here in Hawaii, the core values of this relationship I assume to be universal. Each and every indigenous nation in every corner of this planet, I'm sure, as your own terms to describe these intimate relationships we share with our homelands and waters. My humble challenge to you, if you have not done so already, is to reclaim these terms and practices in your own context and renew your commitments to the responsibilities that these intimate relationships entail. If we do so together, I believe Aloha Aina, by whatever name you call it, can save this planet and birth abundant futures for generations to come. Ahiki ke aloha aina hope loa, until the very last aloha aina lives. Mahalo nui.